negotiate just because. Would you like to do that? You just bless somebody just because. Let your lights shine, let your good works and glorifies our Heavenly Father. We take no credit at all because it's all about God. Amen? Okay, blessing someone without wanting anything in return. It's more fun that way, right? Okay, you give mangoes just because you have want to give mangoes, okay? You don't give mangoes because you want the light cheap. <laughs> just give. Acts 20, 35 says, It's more blessed when we give than we receive. That's how Christians should, that's be our, our norm every single, every single day. Blessing intentionally okay, changes us from inside. Something happens when, when we start to do that, doesn't it? Proverbs 11, 24 and 25 says, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Uh-oh. Let me repeat that again. Give freely and become wealthy. Not only money. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And, okay? Every one of us can make a difference in somebody else's life. And you can do it today. Just by saying, hey, how's it, Brian? Nice to see you, man. Nice shirt, pal. Oh, man, can talk about that. Ed, how's it? Good seeing you. Man, God bless you, man. Hi, Christine. I see you trying to hi. Terry, nice haircut. Yeah? You go all the way. Hi, sunshine. Love your eyes. Little things like that. Okay? Dylan, you're the best, pal. You're the best. When you start doing that, start planting seeds of encouragement, I tell you what, then they will, again, joy is contagious, and they will do the same for somebody else. That's really important that you do that. Amen? So, every one of us can make a difference. Today, here's a couple ways, very simple ways. Number one, how can you make a difference in some, some, somebody else's life today? Listen attentively. I repeat, pay attention. Sometimes people talk to you and you go, uh, how many of you like talking to people and they look over you and you, uh, look, you want their attention, eye to eye contact. Encourage people to speak about something they're most interested about. Okay? What are they most interested about? Their passion. Talk to the man, right? Like, if they love golf, I tell you what, they'll talk about golf. If they like fishing, they'll talk about fishing. If they like sewing, talk about sewing. If they like going to the movies, they'll talk about going to the movies. Listen, from the abundance of the heart, they will speak, right? What are you passionate about? If somebody talks to you about your passion, okay, just like Keith and I, we talk about God and all that. See, hey, where the time went? Man, we, wow, it's gone. Men's ministry went, whoa, wow. Hour and a half went by, like that? Why? When you have like mind speaking, okay, on like <coughs> subjects and your passion, I'll tell you what. People will listen. Encourage people to speak about themselves, okay? It, you have to actually listen, not try to interrupt. Be genuinely, genuinely interested in what you're talking about. Have a heart to heart connection. When you're generally interested in another person, you'll discover that. You know what? Don't think highly of you. It builds great friendships, doesn't it? How many of you have great friends that will listen? My wife listens to me. I have to work on that. Because the more I'm, I'm more proactive. I'm always trying to give. Sometimes they don't need answers. Yeah, ladies? Sometimes you just want to vomit. Jesus is a great listener, isn't he? He's running the universe. He knows everything about everything. But we say, Jesus, he listens. He knows everything about us. He has all the answers that we're looking for. But he still patiently listens without interrupting or speaking over us. Amazing, yeah? Why can't we do the same? I really have to work on that. Sometimes people just want to download and look for someone to trust 
just to listen or just decompress because life is stressful. If you have that kind of person that you can just sit down and share your life, you have something really special. Men, women, that person should be your spouse. Just a little bit there. God is always patient. He is never in a rush. The more you try to rush God, the more the slower He becomes. And He put it in whatever, man. God, give me patience now. It doesn't work that way. We have to say, and what we have to say is really important to Him. Whatever we have to say. Okay? If we just want to bet, He listens. He wants us to empty ourselves of ourselves, our toxic attitudes, and a bleeding heart. Why? He wants us to fill our hearts with His joy, with His optimism. All of us can get negative. All of us have a sinful nature, by the way. Just because I'm a pastor, I don't want to walk on water. I see just like you. It's about Jesus Christ in your life. The circumstances outside of us may change, but when we have confidence in Him, there is a peace beyond understanding. Number you, number, uh, point B, use words of affirmation. Frequently, not once in a while. It should be your normal language. Ephesians 4.29 says, Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear. Can I hear an amen on that one? It's so easy to talk smack, to talk stink, to gossip, fake news. Yeah? That's our sinful nature. It's always easier to gossip and, and, to, and to judge people when we have a big log in our eye. Then we say, hey, look at the speck in your eye. Isn't it? That's our sinful nature. Words of affirmation creates joy and peace and optimism. How about simple things like, thank you, I appreciate you. Man, this, is, this works all the time. I'm sorry. Yeah, ladies, does it work? I was wrong. Please forgive me. Honey, you're the best. But this is the best. I love you. Use those affirming words. Use heartfelt affirming words everywhere. Here, here it is, especially at home. That's where everything stop, starts. When you, what you'll discover is that okay, you have less and less arguments, less drama in your home. Anybody wants less drama in their home? As, as um, CR says, Celebrate Recovery says, don't let your drama turn to trauma. Whoa, you know what I mean? 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, okay, here it is. This is really wonderful. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? What wisdom in this short passage. Three things that wants us to do all of the time. Okay, here it is. Be joyful Always pray, always or continually in all circumstances. Three key words always, continually, and all. God wants us to live our lives daily according to these principles for everyone, just not Christians. This is just a human principle. This principle should be a no brainer for Christians. Be encouragers, affirming words. Optimism, joy. Give them an injection of joy by using your words. Number three, don't put off having fun. Oh, that was me. I was too busy being busy, being busy, being busy, 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 busy. Guess what happens? I forgot to have fun. I had to schedule fun instead of being spontaneous. Nuts, yeah? This is a very familiar scripture, but we got to think about it more seriously, I believe, especially today. Psalms 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Only God can make a day, by the way. Okay? We will 
we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a declaration. No matter what, this is the day. I'm going to enjoy it anyway. No matter what you're facing, good, bad, or the ugly, you're going to have joy anyway. Many of us are put off having joy or fun for another time because we just have overscheduled life and we have our birdies all kapakahe, all in the wrong places. So we forget to enjoy our everyday life. Jesus came to set us free so we could what? Enjoy every day of our life, no matter what. Not on certain days, every day. This is the day. You'll never see today again, by the way. Each moment, okay, think about this. Each moment we live is getting closer to the last moment on earth. The breath that you're taking now is taking you to your last breath. Oh, look at it, monarch butterfly. So this is the day God wants you not to waste, not to squander, no matter what's happening. Don't put it up for another day. Okay, so Lily and I are looking at, you know what, what can we do to make a life worth it? What did we put off doing for another day? Because tomorrow's never promised, right? So that's important. One of these days, want to have everything in, okay, want to have everything in place. The truth is, one of these days or everything, when everything is placed, then may never come on our own timing, by the way. We never know. Look about the tragedies around the world. They, some people never, never plan to die riding a motorcycle or jumping out of a plane. They just want to enjoy themselves and after a tragedy. We have to live our lives. And it would be a God idea if you do it today. Amen? We're given one moment at a time, one day at a time. How will you use this day? It's entirely up to you. Yes, yeah, some of these days, some days are better than others. Just a bit of good advice, okay? For everyone, listen to this. Don't waste your time worrying. Am I speaking to somebody today? Let me repeat that. Don't waste your time worrying. It always... Okay, it always robs you. And when you worry, it robs you of God's joy and peace. It robs you of enjoying today because of what you're focusing in on the bad instead of the good. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, don't worry about anything. Wow. God said, don't worry about anything. Instead, what? Pray about everything. Turn your worry into worship, into prayer. Tell God what you need. Okay? God wants you to depend on Him. Tell God what you need. Okay? And thank Him for what He's done. God, thank you. God wants you. Ask Him. Okay? Seek Him. Keep knocking. Why? It shows that you have faith in Him. That's really important that we understand that. When you do that, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live where? In Christ Jesus. Who lives inside of you? Christ Jesus. When you live inside of Him, you know, this word turns into worship. The panic turns into prayer. Why? Because of your faith. We cannot worry and worship at the same time. It's either or. Either we believe God will do the impossible if He has to, or He will, or we'll fear that the worst will happen to us. Trusting God leads to peace. Worry leads you to a to be fractured into pieces. What do you want? His peace will guide your hearts and minds that you live in Christ Jesus. Number four, hold fast unto Jesus. Proverbs sixteen twenty says, "God blesses those." Who obey him, happy the man who puts his trust in the Lord. Man, that's fundamental. How many of you want to be happy? Duh. Everybody will raise their hands, right? Who wakes up this morning? Okay. Who wakes up this morning saying, I look forward to being sad today. I want to be miserable today. I want to make people around me miserable. Why? Misery loves company, right? 
da 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 you wonder why you that's why according to the scripture okay we can be happy if we obey God and trust God there you go no secret John 15 1 and 17 says I love this scripture he says if you they remain united to me and I will remain united uh, remain united to to you if you remain in me and my words remain in you then you can ask for anything you wish according to his word and it shall you know, you shall have it my father's glory is shown by your very much fruit and in this way you become my disciples you know what disciples mean by, by the way being disciplined by God's word or being God's word that's what discipleship is I love you just as the Father loves me. Remain in my love. If you obey my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's command and remain in His love. There you go. That's it. Love. God doesn't hide His answers. By the way, it's very transparent. He doesn't hide anything from you. Yes, He will test you from time to time. But it's an open book test. All of the answers is right in front of you. Transparency. If you want to plagiarize, plagiarize God. Isn't that exciting? God says, yeah, tell them about me and use my word. You have my permission, by the way. You won't be sued, by the way, for plagiarism. Isn't it cool? The greatest commandment is to love God and to love others. We all have skin in the game, all of us. Especially young guys. Man, there's a big future ahead of you. The best way to express your love for God is to share Jesus with them. The greatest miracle in the world, my brother Jimmy found out. It's Jesus. Each one just reaching one more. You want to expand the kingdom of God? You don't have to be a Billy Graham, or you don't have to be... You have, be yourself. Just the one person. Then you expand the, the, the kingdom of God. The road to heaven is narrow. As, as the Bible says, but there's room for everybody to share. Everything we do in our lives, in our jobs, relationship is centered around 2 Peter 3.9. The Lord is patient with you because love is patient. Because He does not want anyone to be destroyed. Even the, any ones that you don't like. He doesn't want them to be destroyed. Why? He's the Creator. But He wants all to turn away from their sin. Think about it. Think about your enemies. Think about enemies of the United States. Putin? Does God love Putin? Yeah. Does he love the mullahs in Iran? Yes, he does. Does he love North Korea? The leaders there? Yes, he does. Why? Because God is love. Our responsibility, Christians, is to love because okay, love covers a multitude of sin. Can you imagine what we can do if this nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, really believes that? <clears throat> if you don't like America move, don't come over here trying to disrupt our nation. Amen? Live under its laws. Live under the grace of God because we are still one nation under, under God. God is love. We're one nation under God's love. No matter what. Even those you disagree with. You can disagree, but don't be dis disagreeable. Amen? I pray that you will ask Jesus to reign in every part of your life. Not just on Sundays. In your marriage, in your family, in your home, in your business, in your jobs, in your creation, in your recreation, in your travels, driving, or shopping at Costco, everywhere every day of your life because when you get older or you're facing the reality that your life is slipping away your priority somehow makes a drastic switch think about it if you knew the day and time you would leave planet earth how would you live today your priorities change you see things differently you seem to discern what's most important in your life. There's a whole popular TV soap opera. The 
days of her life. Remember that? Some of you said, what is that, right? This used to be really popular, but there was a true saying that says, like the sand in an hourglass, so are the days of our life. Yes, every grain of sand we live is a sand closer than the day that there will be no more sand. Do you want to see new things happening? God, God is doing in your life. You will see what you're looking for. This is the day the Lord has made. 86,400 seconds. What will you do with it? God says, if you want to make your day enjoyable, focus on my presence in your life. Better days are yet to come. There's a saying that I really believe. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. So live today like it's your last day. You never can tell. I hope and pray some of you will decide that this is the day the Lord has made. And you'll make the necessary changes. Just maybe some money, small changes, little switches in your life. Okay? That you will see the glory of God in your life. And you'll be optimistic in your life. Bitter than being sour and bitter, yeah? I hope and pray that this day, you understand that your future is today. This day is the first day of the rest of your life. Now is the time. Don't waste the last moments of your life because you don't know when the last moments of your life will be. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this, these words of yours, especially yours, will just sink so deep into the hearts. And they will just not only understand, they will apply the principles that you have taught us today. Holy Spirit, have your way with us today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, bless the food that you're about to eat. Bless the conversations. Bless each and every one of your creations. Inject them with your contagious joy. And let that joy be shared today and every day of our lives. And we pray this in the name above all names, Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen. amen. God bless you guys. Have something to eat. How about hand for the Lord?